The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. And we are live to the W2M Network as Wrestling to the Max 205 Live. <laughs> we, we need them to make one for us. Does that does it actually say that, or does, did my voice just become our new opening? Your voice just became our new opening because that's how it Fantastic. sound. That, that's how it sounds for the other ones for like Raw and SmackDown. But you listen to it so many times, eventually you're able to imitate it. <laughs> oh, hi everybody! Welcome into the Wrestling to the Max Two Hundred Five Live Review once again. I'm Harry Broadhurst. I am your host here on the W Two M Network, available online at W Two M Net. Dot com. Unfortunately, the co-hostess with the most Liz Puglisi is unable to join us this evening. She had family commitments. But joining me instead is the Gargamel to my Papa Smurf. <laughs> Brandon Biscabing. Now, now you're using Smurf references? Not only that, I'm Papa Smurf. <laughs> That's smurfed up, Brainy. I'm yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Just say it, it's a little smurfed up in here. But in fairness, we're all a little smurfed up in here. <laughs> we are available wherever you listen to many of your fine podcasts. iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Pod, Podbean, CastBox, Spreaker. We may or may not be coming to Spotify at this point. It's becoming a running joke on this show. It's the Glacier Effect. You made that same joke on SmackDown, folks. For my thoughts on that joke, go back and listen to the SmackDown review. And, and for those who do not get it, go watch old good, old WCW. No, for the love of all that is holy, do not go watch old WCW. It's bad enough that we're going to put ourselves through that down the road. Oh, oh. You don't have to. No, no, no. If we have to suffer through it, so do they. <laughs> How the war was won coming eventually Soon. to the W Two Network. I am, as I told you before we start the show, I am into November. So <laughs> you're starting it. to get there. Slowly. Yes, I, I'm up to November seventh, nineteen ninety four. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, that is completely in the past. Literally about twenty five <laughs> years or so. Let's talk about the current product in the WWE, and let's talk about the, the best current television product in the WWE. Let's talk 205 Live, shall we, Brandon? I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that to an extent. I think NXT could give it a, it a run for its money. I think I prefer 205 Live, honestly. Hmm. Right now, you may be correct. Well, they tend to focus <coughs> on fewer people on 205 Live, which allows it to flow more cohesively. Yes. That being said, we'll probably end up talking about NXT on Thursday anyway. Yes. So we'll see what happens when we compare the two on Thursday. What do mm-hmm. you say? Yep. Go us! All right, our <laughs> opening contest scheduled for one fall. One fall. After a video package highlighting what happened last week on 205 Live is Lince Dorito. That's not <laughs> right, Drew. Lince Dorado <laughs> taking on the Brian Kendrick. And yes, that was on purpose. Don't you give me crap. <laughs> that is Calista. actually what Drew Gulag said. Kalisto and Metalik are at ringside. Gulak is on commentary again. Five stars automatically. Where was Gallagher? That's a very, very good question. My assumption is over in the UK getting ready for the next branch. Oh, of the yeah, you're good point. Being taped, uh, I want to say, two weeks. I think yeah, it's not like that. next Monday, but the Monday after it's being taped. And I think, is the download Darby? Darby, like, or the Download Festival in Darby this week? This weekend, yes. Yeah, so he eighth, may be eighth, over ninth, there and tenth. Yeah. But what we see here instead is Lindsay Dorado picking up the win at about seven and a half minutes, hitting the Golden Rewind. <laughs> Lethal injection! <laughs> Sorry, had a cough. Gotta get that checked out. For the pin, as I said, in about seven and a half. Pretty decent opening match here, but man, the Lucha House Party, are they the job squad of of uh, 205 Live or what? They are forever in the opening contest. <laughs> yep. Hey, Alex. What were your thoughts on the match itself? 
Uh, the match itself wasn't bad. Um, you know, again, that, you know, that contrast of styles between, you know, the very high-flying Dorado against uh, the more ground-based uh, Kendrick now. Uh, Gulak was uh, entertaining, as always, on commentary. Oh, you know what I completely forgot about mentioning earlier that we completely glossed over uh, for SmackDown was was how uh, Carmella completely ignored Byron Saxton throughout that whole match. Well, in fairness, Byron Saxton is very easily <laughs> ignorable. He is, the, he is the Percy Watson of SmackDown. Well, that's why I thought of it, because Drew basically did the same exact thing to Percy throughout this whole thing. Yeah, Gulak on commentary definitely makes these matches a lot more interesting. We get – afterwards, we see Gulak lay out both uh, Dorado and Gren Matalik after Kalisto got wiped out on the floor at some point during the match. I'm, I don't remember exactly what happened. I oh, think, uh, go, um, Kendrick, Kendrick threw – Kendrick threw somebody into, into Kendrick Kalisto. Threw, yeah, Kendrick threw Dorado into Kalisto. Or excuse me, Kendrick threw Dorado into Metalik. Yes. Gulak knocked it down, Kalisto, and then Dorado after the match. Yes. A little bit later on in the evening, we find out from our general manager of 205 Live, that being Drake Maverick, that it is the Teddy Long special six-man edition tag Player. match. Player. Coming to 205 Live next week as Gulak teams with Kendrick and Gallagher to take on the full effect of the Lucha House Party. And, 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 and no no one saw this coming at all after what happened post-match during this match. No, not, not whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, it's by the book booking, but at the same time, it's worked for all these years. Why mess with something that yeah. works, you know? The, the one thing I, do, I, I did like a lot um, is that they actually allowed they they went uh new japan style uh with the entrances and actually had uh metalik's uh or not metalik uh dorado's old music play uh when he won we get highlights from last week's title match i stand by this statement that i made last week on this show if you have not yet watched cedric alexander versus buddy murphy from last week's 205 live owe it to yourself to do so the argument can be made that that is your wwe match of the year thus far mm-hmm. freaking fantastic yep afterwards we go to a quick video promo package as he's a he's a go hard he's a go hard he's a he's a go hard mustafa ali talks about the fact that he is still the heart of 205 Live, questioning Buddy Murphy's heart in the process and stating that he still has the heart of a champion and eventually he will get to that spot that he feels he rightfully deserves the Cruiserweight Championship. Our next contest is a squash match scheduled for one fall. One fall and about two and minutes. Self, and self-sufficient commentary. <laughs> as TJP basically does our job for us, trash-talking on the microphone, a jobber named Brian Keith. I did not see the name, the guy who played Brian Keith, but usually NXT likes to use name indie guys to do this spot. So odds are it was probably somebody people in Texas have heard of. Mm-hmm. That said, TJP threatens to leave 205 Live. And if we've seen how cruiserweights have been booked on television before, <coughs> WCW, bad, that's bad probably idea. a really bad idea. I mean, at least WCW did a decent job in the beginning. WWE, on the other hand, when they were part of the main roster, uh, bad. I got three words for you, Brandon. You ready? Okay. Cruiserweight, champion, hornswoggle. I was just about to say hornswoggle, yes. And I actually like Swoggle. He's a decent guy. But seriously, what the? <laughs> Anywho. Uh, TJP busts out the no hand sharpshooter while making his point crystal clear and then pulls back on said sharpshooter in order to get the submission finish after hitting a super dragon esque curb stomp right beforehand. Wait a minute. <laughs> 
So cruiserweights can curve stomp, but Seth Rollins has to just call it the stomp. Okay, it, it's the network; they can do more. Okay, that 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 that, that you may be onto something there. <laughs> that hence, hence why I've said for so long now. I I want them to somehow, especially with expanding and everything. I want them to create either a, a new ECW or their own, you know, TV 14 hardcore show. They could always just put up the old shotgun Saturday nights, too. That, too. Uh, and as somebody who's going back and watching the old school ECW shows on the network, they're fun, but you lose a lot without the music. Oh, yeah. Well, especially like, with I, Sam, man. I just want – I just – okay, so let's put this into perspective for how the war was won here, and then we'll get back to the show, I promise you. Yes. I just finished the Go Home episode of ECW Hardcore Television going into the November to Remember 1994. Mm-hmm. Were you a regular watcher of ECW, Brandon? No, not really. I've been meaning to go back and watch more of uh, ECW. If you get a tape trader's version, and this is how old I am. I used to trade yeah. VHS tapes. If you get an old school tape traders version of hardcore TV, this episode has something that the network version doesn't. Oh, what's that? The November to Remember prep package done to November Rain by Guns N' Roses. Oh. See, that's one of the reasons why I haven't watched any of the ECW stuff on the network is because whenever Sandman would come out, I, you know, I'd want to hear Enter Sandman. I mean, you could Uh, always uh, put uh, it on your stereo. That's true. Honestly, the same thing goes for WCW once we start uh, How the War Was Won. I'm always going to feel like um, it's always going to feel weird not hearing Voodoo Child whenever uh, uh, Hogan comes out, especially when he's like doing the guitar with the title. The biggest name in wrestling. (laughs) Okay, now that we've taken our trip down Nostalgia (laughs) Road, once again, how the war was won coming soon to the W2M network. Yes. Leo Rush is on his way to 205 Live. Oh, my God. After offending everybody in the NXT locker room for making a joke about Emma being fired. (laughs) Um, well, you know... I'm going to go ahead and just chalk this up to one of those happens things. And hopefully Leo has learned his what lesson and everything I've heard says that he has. He's been doing very well at the NXT house shows. There's so many people on NXT television right now that they wouldn't be able to find time on TV for Leo. So I'm glad that he's moving up to the 205 Live roster. A little bit surprised to see them bringing him in as a cocky heel, though. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, well, although we're, we haven't really seen anything with him yet, so we don't know for sure what he's going to be. But let's look at the let's look at the uh, the the video package that he got here. The, let's look at wait. the way that he was presented. He was presented very heelish. I didn't see any pa- uh, video package. I just saw it pop up saying Leo Rush is coming. Leo cut a promo right beforehand. You clearly weren't paying attention. Yeah, I must not have been paying attention. We here announced the six-man tag match. Yes. You dropping the ball, Brandon. We here announced the six-man tag match. Player. Between the Lucha House. Sorry. I thought we were going to talk about Leo Rush coming uh, to 205. We already did. Well, I didn't say anything. Oh, you want to actually discuss your thoughts? I, I, well, I, I just wanted five? to. I, I just wanted to say that with uh, Triple H being un, in control of two hundred five, that I think um, he has a better chance of doing more uh, with it, and maybe if he's successful, it may lead to some other people from who are currently in NXT who originally uh, didn't uh, say that they were going to go to two hundred five, potentially going. Uh, Oh, I really hope not. I think I know where you're going with this because there's somebody very similar to Leo in NXT right now that has probably about a decade more experience than Leo does. Yes, I know this. Are you thinking about Ricochet to 205? Yes, I am. 
I don't like it, and here's why. I think Ricochet is one of those once-in-a-lifetime athletes. And you have to take advantage of somebody with his God-given athletic ability. Look at how viral that clip from last week's episode of NXT went. That's true. Like I said, he is one of those once-in-a-lifetime athletes. You do not waste that by having him on 205 Live. Yeah. As much as we hardcore fans may enjoy 205 Live, Ricochet is one of those athletes that you're going to need to expose to a much broader audience than just the WWE Network concentrated shows. True. Ricochet is a guy whose athletic ability will sell tickets. But in order for him to sell tickets, he has to be on television to do so. Yes. Buddy Murphy, who's now apparently best friends with Tony Nese. When the hell did that happen? And when did Nice turn... Well, I guess he never fully turned face. So. Well, I mean, him and Gulak were beefing, but then he was friends with Gulak again, but then they were beefing, and it, none of it makes sense. <laughs> it's basically like Bailey and Sasha over on Raw. This will be a fun reference to make. You ready? Yep. The Young and the Cruiserweights. <sighs> I mean, I could simplify that by saying the Young and the Wrestlers, and that would be funnier. Yeah. Yeah. Murphy talks about that he's going to take care of business and prove that he cannot be stopped because he is the juggernaut Buddy Murphy. We still have all these promo put buddies to shame. And if you didn't know, he's a he's a go hard into our main event scheduled for one fall. One fall. We saw this match before when they were building up Buddy Murphy to get him ready for Cedric Alexander. We get it again now that Buddy Murphy is on the other side of Cedric Alexander. These two spend the better part of about 12 minutes beating the crap out of each other. And then we have a no contest finish thanks to Hideo Itami. (laughs) Let's first talk about the match because I don't want to do the match a disservice. Right. The match itself is actually really good up until the interference by Atami. Oh, yes. I, under- I understand kind of wanting to protect all parties involved, and something tells me that this is going to set up the Liz Puglisi special, <laughs> the multi-man match for the Cruiserweight title. There's looking at you, Liz. Or, 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 we'll, just get, or, or we'll just get a multi-man uh, number one contenders match. I mean, either way, you get a triple threat or you get a four-way for the title. It doesn't matter. It's still more than two people in the ring at once, and Liz is going to flip a gasket. Um, I'm not sure what Buddy Murphy's neck is made of, but I'm guessing it's not the same thing as most humans because that reverse Rana dropped him square on his goddamn head. He, he's Wolverine, man. It's made of an- adamantium. I thought that's what the shield was. Made. Never mind. <laughs> oh no, it's vibranium for Captain America. Yes. I I don't follow superheroes. I'm not big into superhero culture. It's whatever. Okay. <laughs> Your thoughts on the match itself before we talk about the finish? Yeah, I mean the match was fine. You know, I mean these two have certainly had better matches against other people, but you know, uh, for you know for a main event that it it didn't really mean anything. Uh, You know, it was still a good match. Let's talk about the finish, the finish with the interference by Hideo Itami. All right. So while I may have complained about it, ruining what was up to that point, a very good match. Theoretically speaking, this fits into Hideo Itami's character. Does it not? Oh, definitely. Because he's all about being shown respect. And with these two feuding once again and possibly looking at trying to become number one contender again to Cedric Alexander's title, I'm guessing Atami not being involved in that discussion is kind of what drove him to the point that he felt the need to lay out yeah. both Mustafa Ali as well as Buddy Murphy here. Because he first knocked Mustafa Ali off the top rope as he was going for the 0-5-4. which is the most visually impressive move with the dumbest name in professional wrestling. And then the basement drop kick, the sliding drop kick, I guess you could say. The baseball slide drop kick? I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure what the hell to call that drop kick that he did in the corner, but painful. It looked like it hurt because it looked like he drop kicked him square in the tooth. Mm-hmm. Do you buy a Tommy getting involved here? Are you okay with it? What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine with it. I mean, 
like you said, you know, these two have feuded for the number one contendership in the past, and we've had a combination of Mustafa Ali and Buddy Murphy in the title picture for, what, three months now? Four months? Uh, Going back to WrestleMania. Yeah. So, you know, this is a good way to kind of get a fresh face into uh, into the title picture and, you know, give some more people some more opportunities uh, in 205. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. Let the record state that I'm actually a very big fan of Hideo Itami. Oh, so am I. But I would totally have been okay with another Mustafa Ali, Cedric Alexander match. I mean, I thought, I, those, I thought those two had a fantastic match at mm-hmm. WrestleMania. They killed it in their match in, on um, on 205 Live right before the Cruiserweight title tournament. And I feel like giving them a third opportunity to shine against each other would be exactly what this division needed. But I understand where they're going with the Atomic character here, so I'm not entirely against it, even if I am disappointed that it didn't give us a finish to what was a really good match up until that point. Yeah, I mean, even if this does result in you know, another, you know, either Cedric versus Mustafa or Cedric versus Buddy Murphy match, that's fine as long as, you know, and and it may even lead into something with the Tommy of, you know, him losing again and then him saying, you know, he's not getting any respect around here, all of that, and leading into a feud against someone else and him kind of imposing himself into the title picture and, you know... I mean, you could do something with it. Um, You know, you could do kind of like what... um, I I don't know. Are are you all caught up on New Japan? Not even close. I'm still back at... I'm still back at Honor Rising. I haven't been paying much attention. Oh, okay. Well, recently, uh, for the uh, Never Openweight title, uh, Tai Chi basically imposed himself into the... uh, into the uh, title picture and, you know, forced his way and made the match at D- at uh, Dominion a uh, triple threat. So, like, you could... I could easily see a Tommy doing something like that where he keeps on attacking either... Bo- both Cedric and, uh, you know, if, let's say, Mustafa Ali becomes number one contender, attacking both of them and basically saying, you know, give me the respect I deserve, put me in the match. And then finally they have to, you know, acquiesce or whatnot. Or, you know, they have a match, you know, and a Tommy wins, beat, beats uh, one of them to put himself into the match. I feel like this may come off as mildly racist, and I don't want it to do so. I apologize in advance. But basically what you're saying is that they need to respect me! Yep, pretty much. Okay. Again... Not intended to be racist. No, nope. intended to be an Atomi impersonation. Yep. Just for first-time listeners that are wondering <laughs> what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and that'll put a nice, tidy little bow on this episode of 205 Live, Brandon. Scale of 1 to 10. Uh, I'll give it a 6.5. You know, nothing too crazy, nothing really to write home about. Um, but, you know... Two solid matches tonight, you know, both the the Dorado match, and it was nice to see Dorado get a win uh, on his own. Um, but that, you know, solid match there, and the main event was a good match before the end, and then the end, you know, while, you know, you'd like to see a clean finish, it moves some. It moves the story along. It puts another factor into this whole into the whole title picture, and you know we'll see where they go from here with it. I agree to an extent. There, I'm actually a little bit higher than you are at a seven, but at the same time, when you think about this year, it's a step down from last week's eight yeah. and a half for me, and I think you gave it a nine last week. Yes, I did. Um. The matches this week were not as good as last week, but the stories that were being told were just as impressive. And like you said about the whole Adeo Atami thing there, it's understandable from a long-term storytelling position, even if it is disappointing in the short term by the fact that it cost us a good, a clean finish to what up to that point had been a very good match. Mm -hmm. 
One word review, Brandon. What do you got for me? Um, progression. You know, we got, you know, that whole feud between uh, Lucha House Party and, you know, the the ground-based guys, Gallagher, Kendrick, and Gulak, moving forward, leading into a, a six-man six man tag match next week. Um, you have uh, the whole thing with TJP progressing uh, with him, you know, wanting to try to get back to where he was. And then you have, you know, uh, Itami imposing himself into the title picture, which we'll see where, where they go with that. I have one word here and then a quick explanation that's going to make it make complete sense. You ready? Okay. My one word review for this show this week is logic. Yep. There's no dudes in drag. There's no chicks having to dance off. <laughs> this is professional wrestling storytelling 101 on this show. And it is why it is such a tried and true formula. Because it works. works. Yep. I dislike you or you have something that I want. It's that simple, yep. people. It's basic wrestling storytelling. Gulak is mad at the Lucha House Party because he feels like their nonsense defy his style of professional wrestling. I get that. Yep. Mustafa Ali and Buddy Murphy are beating the dog crap out of each other because they want another shot at Cedric Alexander. I get that. Adele and Tommy's beating up both people because he wants a shot at uh, Cedric Alexander because he feels he's been overlooked. I get that. It is storytelling in its most basic format. But there's a reason that it's such a tried and true formula because it works. Yep. That's all there is to say. Yep. This has been the Wrestling to the Max 205 Live review. Brandon, do we have anything to say before we get out of here? Do you want to tell anybody about our podcast, our other podcasts? Um, well, I've got the Fantasy Football Podcast coming up later this week. Uh, this week we'll talk about wide receivers and running backs uh, heading into the 2018 season. Uh, we will will have – well, Harry and I will have uh, the NXT review probably Thursday. Probably. Probably, yeah. Um, Liz may be back for that, by the way. Okay. So it may be all three of us. Um, and then uh, Harry, as he said earlier, he's he's getting closer. We're, we're getting closer to how the war was won. Uh, and then, do you want to talk all about right. the kickoff? I'll do the kickoff here. In addition, I will announce officially, for the record, this is breaking news here on the 205 Live Review The very first episode of How the War Was Won will be Bash at the Beach, 1995. No, not that Bash at the Beach. The year prior, as well as In Your House 2, The Lumberjacks. That will be the very first episode of How the War Was Won. Oh, God, a whole show surrounded, uh, or a whole show based off of Lumberjack matches? Lumberjack matches. Lumberjack match, singular. Main event, oh, Diesel oh, okay. versus Psycho Sid. Oh, lovely. Well, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, there is a barn burner of an intercontinental title match on that show to discuss as well. Okay. So, good with the bat here, Bisco. Okay. In addition, August 8th, as I previously have mentioned, is the return of the kickoff. We come back with our college football predictions. We predict all six of the major conferences – and give our predictions for both the playoffs itself as well as our national champions. August 15th, we review the AFC. August 22nd, we review the NFC. August 29th are our official playoff predictions as well as our year-end award winners. That will be on the kickoff starting August 8th here on the W2M Network. I think that about does it for us, Brandon. Yep. Again, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Podbean, CastBox, YouTube, the W2M Net website. All these places and so many more, you can listen to the Wrestling to the Max network products, the W2M network of products. You can find us online as well at W2Mnet.com. For the absent co-hostess with the most assists, Liz Puglisi, 
He's Brandon Biscabing, Gargamel. <laughs> I'm Harry Papa Smurf Broadhurst, thanking you for listening, as you have been listening to the Wrestling to the Max 205 Live Review for June the 5th, 2018. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week with our 205 Live Review, as well as our predictions for Money in the Bank on the SmackDown Live Review. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs>